uh, we're going to try to uh, wrap up uh, the topic of faith tonight. Uh, our first lesson on this topic, uh, the way how I did it, we had faith and then slash fullness. And if you're looking at the screen, you will see that again tonight because uh, faith can, uh, we can, we can uh, divide that into uh, faith and then faithfulness. And I hope at the end of our discourse tonight, we can appreciate the difference and recognize that it's one thing to have faith while it is something else to be faithful, right? So we want to look at faithfulness tonight. Uh, would someone please read that first slide? Maintaining faith or elegance, showing a strong sense of beauty or consen conscientiousness. All right. Maintaining faith or allegiance, showing a strong sense of duty or conscientiousness. All right. That's what faithfulness is. And notice it said it, it begins with the word to maintain, maintain, maintain. Uh, uh, a majority of people may be able to exercise initial faith. Uh, we're all familiar with the scripture that says, the race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong. The scripture says, he that endureth, right? So the, it, 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 it's one thing to have faith, but it's some quite something else to maintain that faith. So when we talk about the fullness of faith, right? Faithfulness. We, 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 we have spoken about faith in terms of its inception, how it is received, how it grows, right? We've talked about it as something that is dynamic. It's not static, right? Uh, well, uh, faith, uh, needs to be maintained and it needs to uh, come to its fullness, the fullness. That's what faithfulness means. The fullness of faith, the completion of faith, right? So we have to maintain faith or allegiance. People can uh, 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 pledge their loyalty to someone or something uh, temporarily. You can pledge your loyalty to something uh, based upon some mutual benefit. And as soon as uh, the benefit expires, then the loyalty ceases, right? But faithfulness, when it comes to our Christian walk, it is maintaining allegiance, <clears throat> showing a strong sense of duty or conscientious next next slide please the most significant evil word for faith is aman a root word that denotes reliability stability and firmness all right uh, we've discussed this before and from the hebrew perspective again uh, more dealing with the word believe Right? The, 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 the root word for faith really comes from the terminology that we know today as believe. It is, it is more in our Western world that we have somehow distinguished between faith and believing. And we'll cover that <clears throat> later on. But the root of this word faith <clears throat> is a man, right? <clears throat> and it denotes reliability, stability, and firmness. <clears throat> Remember, we're dealing with <clears throat> faithfulness here as an aspect of the fruit of the Spirit. So one of the, <clears throat> the, 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 the aspects, one of the uh, virtues then, uh, that the Holy Spirit produces in our lives is the ability to be stable, 
and firm. Uh, uh, many of us who've been walking with the Lord for any length of time can truly attest that uh, oftentimes we would have failed uh, and we have failed. And yet there is this power within that aids and assists us through those difficult times and helps us to be stable and firm. It, 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 were not, it, it was not based upon our own strength, but somewhere, somehow from within, God provides us with the ability to endure trials and temptations and setbacks. See, so the, the, the Spirit of God produces the ability to be stable and firm. Next slide, please. A man concretely meant to support or to uphold, as for example, the strong arms of a parent would uphold an infant. Those arms are sure, certain, and firm. In a physical sense, it is used of pillars that provide support or door. So, so from, from, from a visual perspective, all right, to understand this word aman, to believe, right? Talking about being faithful or having faith. It, it, it means to support or uphold. It is, it is being reliable, someone that can be counted on. And again, it gives us the example of a parent upholding that infant that that infant is is perhaps unaware of the dangers that may surround it uh, but it it fully rests in that parent's arms as the parent holds that infant right think of again the pillars that support the door the door can swing open and shut because it is anchored it is supported uh, by the pillars and that's the sense of believing that's the sense of being faithful right dependable the door can depend upon that pillar to uphold it as it moves back and forth Right? It stays in place because of the reliability of the support. See, So this is an important virtue as Christians that we need to develop. Again, it is not just to have faith. It's not just to have saving faith. We've talked about that, that your, your saving faith, the faith that you had initially to come to Christ, to believe in Christ, now must be nurtured and matured as you go through your journey professing Christianity. Okay, next slide, please. Another significant Hebrew word used to convey the idea of faith is yar, usually translated to fear, yar, occurs more, than, more often in the Old Testament than aman. Although the two express very similar concepts, to, to fear God is to believe him with reverential awe, even to the point that emotional trepidation occurs. All right. So when we talk about the idea of faith, right, we're talking about reliability, but it also carries the sense of awe or reverence, right, to fear God, to fear God. And we must fear God because he is reliable. He is trustworthy. Whatever he says, he will do. God has revealed himself to mankind through his words that have been preserved in what we call the Bible. But he's also revealed himself through his actions, through nature. We have a historical record of all that God has done. We open our eyes and we see this vast universe around us. And we have not yet even tapped 
uh, uh, beneath the surface surface of the different laws of nature and 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 one must stand in awe bible says the heavens declare his glory the firmament showeth his handiwork when we look at the heavens when we think of the the forces that are at work that 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 that, that brought everything into existence and <clears throat> maintains this universe you're talking about forces uh, when you talk when, when when they talk about the temperatures of some of these stars when they talk about the distances of some of these galaxies when they talk about the speed of light and how many light years one would have to travel uh, we we're, we're dealing with numbers that are beyond the human capability and to think that the creator is always greater than his creation when you contemplate the the, the, the magnitude the majesty of god it ought to make us stand in awe and in reverential fear of him and this is also associated with our believing god to believe god to believe god when when a child uh, 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 who has respect for their parents hears their father or their mother call or give them instruction uh, the child ought to know instinctively that when you hear the voice of your parents because of that relationship because you understand who they are there's a certain respect there's a certain reverential fear that that that, that should be a, a, a part of your interaction and that is also because you believe in the word of your parents obviously we know that much of that is eroded today that our young people and our children they don't believe the words of their parents especially when they become teenagers and young adults uh, but think of that little child when, when 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 he or she hears their father's voice or just the footsteps of the parents coming up the stairs there is a a reverential fear because I, I, I believe, I, I, I have faith in uh, what my parent represents, right? And, and we have lost that fear of God. We've lost that fear of God. And that simply means that we are losing faith in God. When you, when you have complete trust in him, you learn to believe that whatever God says he will do, then it will cause you to, to, to live your lives with a little bit more uh, 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 intentional, a little bit more purposeful, with a, with a sense that, that, that uh, uh, the God that I serve, the God that I believe in, because I understand he's a God of justice. He's a God of mercy, yes, but he's a God who punishes wrongdoing. Then because I believe in him, then it causes me to watch what I say and what I do. It is because of this loss of Yare, Yare, the fear of God, this loss of truly believing in God, why we are seeing the church operate the way it does today see what we need as christians to maintain that reverential fear and awe and respect of a sovereign we've all witnessed the death of a sovereign and the the the, the, the respect and the awe that that surrounds uh, uh, uh her, her rulership and her reign. I was talking with one of our members today who grew up uh, in, 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 in England and understands the history so well that not even her husband, who was titled a prince, could walk beside her, had to walk, uh, uh, I, forgot, I think it's six paces behind her. The, 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 the reverence, the respect 
that just comes with the office, the majestic reverence. Praise God. That is a part of our faith in God. If you truly believe in God and if you're going to be faithful to him, then we must maintain a reverential respect for his awesome majesty. Next slide, please. To fear him is to maintain a firm conviction that the Lord's directives are reliable, protective, and beneficial to the believer. Someone who fears God dreads disappointing him, but the fear of the Lord produces joy and fulfillment in the life of the one who fears. To fear the Lord is used syn synonymously to serve him in sincerity and truth. And so again, we're dealing with this root word, aman, to believe in God. We're dealing with the fullness, the maturity of your faith. You, you, your faith has to go beyond feeling to knowing. And if you arrive at the place where you can truly say that I know there is a God, it's not just that I believe, but I know I have a, a verifiable experience that God is real and what I've read about him because we will never know him in his fullness. And all, with all the experiences you have of God, it will never uh, give us everything, the totality of all that we should know, right? Uh, 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 Paul says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, right? We only know in part on this side of eternity, right? But for what you do know experientially, it should not destroy what the word says about him because uh, that is an issue that we face where because the Lord may have done something good for a person in their lives, they, 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 they assume that that is the totality of who God is. Just because you have a subjective experience of God does not mean that it doesn't require you to read the rest of the Bible, to see the other facets of God. And so many people today are, are living and serving God simply based on a subjective experience. And when they read their Bibles or you try to teach them their Bibles, it becomes like you're telling them about a foreign or a strange God, right? But your personal experience with God is only a small, very small slice of who God is. Right? The word of God in its completion, all 66 books, will give us a greater perspective of who God is. And when you read about this God, right, then you understand his reliability, right? That when God speaks, it comes to pass. You, 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 you can trust in what God says, right? And so you, 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 you have this relationship, this intimate relationship with him. The more you know about him, the more trust you put in him, the more you fear him with that reverential fear, then God becomes more real in your life. Uh, many people live their spiritual lives and walk their spiritual walk as if God is just some abstract ideal that he's somehow distant from us but God is real like a real person God is real and the relationship you have with him is a real relationship like you would have with someone else and when you truly love someone when you when you truly respect someone then 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 you don't you don't want to cheat on them you don't want to disappoint them you care about their feelings it, it becomes a real experience to you and so god needs to become real in our lives uh, you know it's amazing how many people on sunday 
can present themselves in such a way and yet from monday to saturday if you should meet those same people it is a totally different presentation we present ourselves a certain way before certain people as in perhaps maybe the pastor or the leaders or again when, when we are around a certain company then we conduct ourselves a certain way and then when we are absent from that company we conduct ourselves another way it is, it is a complete misunderstanding of our walk our walk is not a walk with the pastor our walk is not a, our walk of faith is not a walk with the church our walk of faith is not a walk on a specific day your walk of faith is a walk with god and whatever you're doing should be done to please God. So if you are uh, uh, by yourself in some dark place with, 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 with someone you shouldn't be with or uh, at an activity or an event that does not glorify God, because of your knowledge of God, because of your relationship with God, there ought to be some conviction within you that says, I don't belong here. I, I don't belong. God is not pleased with this environment or with this activity. So that that yare, that fear, that, that faithfulness to God, right, should lead you to not want to disappoint him. And now you will be more cognizant, more intentional about how you live, not just before the eyes of some people, but before the eyes of the Lord. See? And this, this, this fear of God should bring joy and fulfillment because God does reward us and he lets us know when he's pleased. When God is pleased with our lives, praise God, you will know, praise God, there's a, there's a joy on the inside. There's, there, there's, there's strength on the, there's favor, praise God. It's a spiritual walk. So within the spiritual man, it, it's a completely different experience because you're walking in faithfulness with God. See, so to fear the Lord is to serve him in sincerity and in truth. If you're going to be faithful to God, then it requires, it demands a sincere living genuine, unpretentious, not hypocritical, praise God, not pretending, amen, but you are honest and transparent before God, praise God. Next slide, please. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. See? You can see that this 12 verse 13. See, so, so here we go. Right? The conclusion of the whole matter by the preacher is to what? Fear God, Yahweh, which is to be faithful. See, don't, don't escape what we're discussing tonight. We're talking about being faithful. So we serve God, and the only way we can be faithful to God is to have a healthy respect a healthy reverential fear of God, right? And that is the conclusion of the whole matter because when you have that healthy respect of God, then it helps you to be faithful to do what he says. It is the whole duty of man. Next slide, please. Like Amman, the Hebrew rule Yare reveals much about the characteristics of genuine faith. Old Testament authors use the fear of the Lord to underscore the importance of submission to God. This submission should occur subjectively in minds, wills, and emotions of people who trust God's word. This submission results in objective behavior that reflects God's character. So faithfulness to God produces uh, or, or a healthy fear of God 
is produced by genuine faith in God. See? So the fear of the Lord caused believers to submit to his will because there was a healthy fear. It was a healthy fear. Again, we're talking about a healthy respect, not to be afraid to run away from God, but like children who love their parents. They love their parents, but there ought to be a healthy respect for your parents and even those in authority. So, so faithfulness is produced in our lives the more we submit to God out of that healthy reverence for God. That is what yields a faithful spirit, right? So this submission occurs in the mind and the wills, see? Everything begins in your will, in your mind, and the body reacts based upon what's going on in your mind so as the mind submits then your actions and your attitudes will submit so when we see people struggle in their objective walk with god it is really as a result of their inability to submit subjectively in their minds to the will and the word of god Right, So you don't want to be a Christian whom in your mind you're thinking you can do whatever you please. And again, we talked about some people thinking that the word of God is ancient, right? And uh, uh, it's all subjective and it's how we interpret scriptures. And, you know, there's a whole lot of subjectivity in our walk with God, not recognizing that the, 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 the word of God is gives us the most comprehensive view of who God is. And, and, and the word of God tells us what will befall those who do not obey him, those who do not trust in him. So if you have that healthy respect for God, it will lead to submission of your will, submission of your mind and your emotion. And then guess what? Your behavior now will reflect God's character. Next slide, please. An element of human responsibility resides in despair. Choose for yourselves today whom you will serve. God does not force faith upon unwitting people. He presents his expectations and promised benefits to people, but their freedom to choose and to receive the consequences of their choices remain. Refusal to choose him can be followed by God's hardening the unbeliever's resistance. And this again ought to make us even fear more, right? Because the more we resist God, is the more resistant we become to God. See? The more you resist God, is the more you re become resistant to, 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 to his influences. See? So there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's an element of human responsibility. God is not going to make you faithful. Okay? God is not going to make you faithful. By virtue of your knowledge of God. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing. So the more you hear, and remember when this was written, uh, uh, the printing press was not developed. And so the only way that the audience could hear the word of God was uh, to gather uh, uh, collectively as a community. Today, we, we, we have the word at our at our fingertips so uh, uh, it's not just about hearing it on Sunday but when we read the Word of God it ought to develop faith in us but not only ought it to develop faith it also should arouse this reverential fear this awe and respect when you read of the majesty and the grandeur 
of the greatness of God and what he is able to do. When you understand that your breath is in his hands, that every hair on your head is numbered, that God knows what you're going to think before you think it. When you, the more you read your Bible and begin to understand whom God is, your faith is built, but also your fear is built right and then now the more knowledge you have of him it becomes your responsibility see to choose how you're going to walk with this god he's not going to force you to be faithful folks he's not going to make you faithful it is as a result of his revelation in your lives and that's why it is seems so important that we project the right image of god this watered down god grandfatherly god that is being presented that doesn't send anybody to hell and doesn't punish anybody guess what it does not produce the faith that is able to make them faithful see it does not produce the fear right that will cause people to submit that is the the, 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 the issue with the, 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 the way how uh, God is being presented. We ought to present the God of the Bible. And when you present the God of the Bible as he ought to be presented, yes, he is a God of love and mercy, but he's also a God who punishes the disobedient and punishes the unwilling. And once you have that knowledge of him, just like parents. Again, all of us grew up in homes where there were parents. Some of us got some tough love, right? And we understand that uh, uh, part of the punishment, you may not have understood it then, but now you do, was as a result of their love for us, see? So we ought to have this respect and uh, reverence from uh, for God derived as a result of our knowledge of him nobody is gonna force that on you god tells you what he expects he tells you who he is he tells you what he likes he tells you what he doesn't like and if we come to him as children with obedient submissive hearts and wills he gives us everything that we need to serve him but it is your choice okay it is your choice and again the more we resist the more we reject god is the more he rejects us you don't backslide in one day okay you notice people in church it starts gradually okay they are missing a, a, a service here they're missing a service there and then it becomes begins to increase and increase and increase until after a while they don't have the mind to come back it is because gradually as you're turning your back on god he's turning his back to you see so it is very it is very important that when we hear the word of god as much as it may hurt or offend or may seem difficult the best response to the word of god is to willingly submit that is how children operate in the presence of their parents they don't understand everything parents are saying but because they trust in them they they have they, have, they, they, they develop a, a sense of reliance upon what the parents say and those children who trust godly parents turn out well those children who don't trust godly parents they suffer more see okay and that's just how it works the the the, the, the more we're willing to submit to godly instructions it is the better our lives will be. Next slide, please. The dominant New Testament term for faith is the Greek word pistis, usually translated faith. It conveys the idea of trust, a firm internal conviction regarding the truthfulness of someone or some claim. The verb form pistoi 
is usually translated I believe or I trust. Pistis and a pistostui in the NT correspond to the OT terms Aman and Yare. All right, so we looked at Aman and Yare as Old Testament terms, and again, more focusing on the word believe. In the New Testament, which is written in Greek, we have pistis and pisteo, right? And it, it, it means the same thing. It's a firm internal conviction regarding the truthfulness of someone, right? So when you have a true conviction of who God is, okay, that is that 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 demonstrates itself. That now that that conviction will will demonstrate it in how you live your lives, right? That that faith, as we talked about, you're you're you're, you're dealing with something unseen. So the circumstances and situations of life uh, may not seem favorable, but because of your faith in God because of his faithfulness to you and his faithfulness to others as recorded in his word, because of your decision to be faithful to him, you will now trust in him to deliver you out of that situation. You will not make decisions based upon the situation. You will not make decisions based upon the circumstance. When people make decisions simply based upon uh, circumstances and decisions, it is evidence of their lack of faithfulness, okay? It's evidence of your lack of faithfulness. Faithfulness means you're gonna endure. You're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna stand under okay you're gonna you're gonna go you're gonna persevere no matter what and that's why uh, uh, uh the image of marriage is used to convey the relationship that we have with jesus christ because it is in the relationship of marriage where faithfulness right is exemplified to its highest degree okay for anybody who's been married or been to a wedding, you know the vows for better, for worse, in sickness, in health, right? You, you have to repeat these vows that you're going to be what? Faithful no matter what, okay? So the, 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 the Greek pistis and pisteo conveys the idea of this internal conviction, I've made up my mind that no matter what comes my way, I'm not gonna quit on God, I'm not gonna walk away from the church, I'm not gonna, you know, all these different things that we see people do as a result of their unfaithfulness. I'm not gonna quit on ministry. I'm not gonna quit on uh, 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 what, what, what the Lord has called me to do. Praise God, we have to be faithful, reliable, and trustworthy. Next slide, please. With that notion of firm support as the bedrock for faith, words such as firmness, con constancy, steadfastness of character or trustworthiness best convey the related concept of faithfulness all right so steadfastness right reliability that is the the character that god wants to produce in our lives again when we are young then we are pliable right we are amendable we can we can vacillate, we go back and forth. And we've talked about the, 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 the infancy of, of, of Israel as a nation and how they struggled in their faith. So, so we, we all go through that phase, but remember we're dealing with the fruit of the spirit, what the Holy Ghost wants to produce in your lives, right? And God wants to produce steadfastness steadfastness god wants to produce trustworthiness in us 
right? Can, 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 you know, can, can God rely on us? You know, can, can, can the church rely on us? Are we reliable in our giving? Are, are we reliable in our service? Are we, are we reliable? Is there a, a certain level of constancy in how we, in our walk with God? All of these characteristics are tested. And, 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 and if we fail, it, it, it simply means that, that we are lacking. As children of God, we want to develop a sense of reliability when it comes to paying our tithes, when it comes to being faithful to service, when it comes to being faithful in ministry, when it comes to being faithful to whatever we say, right? Whatever we say we are going to do, we, we, we have to develop this, this, this reliability that someone can trust in us. That when we say something, that when we say this is what we're about, we're not just about it on Sunday. We're not just about it when we want to appear religious, right? But we are firm. Everywhere we go, there's a constancy about us. Right, that is the characteristics of maturity. Next slide, please. To be unfaithful is to be unworthy of confidence or belief. In the Old Testament, a synonym for faithfulness is truth. Since God is consistently true, he is the object of human trust. When used of God in the Old Testament, the word faithfulness frequently refers to his unwavering commitment to his promises. So there is no one who is going to trust you with responsibility if you're unfaithful, right? An unfaithful person is unworthy of confidence or belief. We are seeing all around us, marriages are falling apart, homes are falling apart, uh, contracts are being broken. Why? Because of the unreliability of these human institutions. But God has called us to be above human institutions in a world that vacillates, in a world filled with so much unreliability, the one place that people should look to and find reliability should be in the church, see? So for all of us whose aim and desire is to emulate God, that's what Christianity is, folks, all right? It is to emulate God. And if God is reliable, it simply means God is true. And if he is reliable and true, therefore our words must be true. Our actions must be true. We must be reliable and genuine in our faith. Otherwise, we are not being faithful, right? God is unwavering. That's why we turn to God, right? That's why we turn to God, because he is trustworthy. That's why we rely on God, because he is trustworthy. If God should fail in any one area of his commitment, he would cease to be God. The very heavens or the entire universe is held in place because of God's faithfulness, his truthfulness, and his reliability. Everything falls apart if God should cease to be faithful. This is an important characteristic, folk, characteristic folks, that God has enabled and empowered us to become. You were not like that. Right? We come from a sinful world where we lied, we cheated, right? Uh, we were deceptive and disingenuous 
and nothing we said, you know, uh, 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 was reliable. We stole, right? We, 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 were, we were insincere in our relationships, in our finances, in everything we did. We were, we were insincere. But now that we come to Christ, he has deposited within us by his Holy Ghost the ability to become sincere, to become reliable, to become true. That is That should be our aim and our desire. And again, there's a growing phase. There's a growing phase. But we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit being developed in our lives. Next slide, please. Faithfulness is more than momentarily, momentary assent to the truth of God. It is commitment to the truth and it manifests itself in continued obedience. So it's not about, you know, it's great that we started, right? Kudos, hooray, wonderful, right? But it is not the one who starts who receives the crown, folks. It's not the one who starts. What God is looking for is not for starters, okay? What God is looking for are people who will continue, 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 continue. When Jesus gave the parable, of the sower and the seeds and he gave the different types of soil right he talked about the seed right that that was planted in the stony ground and yes it sprung up and it endured for a while right for a while but 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 then when when, when the sun came up right because there was no depth of earth what happened it dried up see so it's not about the start, folks. Great that you start, right? But what is most important is that as you go through the journey, there are going to be obstacles and God allows them. There are going to be setbacks and God allows them, right? There's going to be adversity and trial and God allows them. He allows them in order to develop faithfulness out of your life. You might have started out in faith, but you have to move from faith to the fullness of faith. See, okay? You have to move from faith to the maturity of your faith. That's why you encounter all the things you encounter in life, right? Some positive, some negative, because some of the tests you get, uh, 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 it's not all a uh, negative. Right? Sometimes God tests you with more money. Sometimes God tests you with more hours on the job. Sometimes he tests you with uh, 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 luxurious things to see how you're going to respond. It's still a test, right? To determine your faithfulness. God wants to produce a faithful attitude. So it's more than momentary assent. Okay, you can repeat after me all you want. You can pray the sinner's prayer all you want. You can do all of that. Okay, but your momentary ascent is not going to prove you to be faithful. It is as you continue, as you continue in your walk with God, that faithfulness is produced and strengthened. Next slide, please. Abraham's life in this regard is instructive. He assented to, relied upon, and acted in con conformity to the revealed word of God. He received God's revelation as true and his subsequent actions proved his faithfulness. He left home and country, settled in a strange land, and offered up his son Isaac as God commanded. His willingness to sacrifice his only son is an unparalleled expression of his faithfulness in the Old Testament. It is no surprise, therefore, that Abraham is commended for his steadfastness and his set forth in the New Testament as one whose behavior should be imitated by Christians. 
Galatians 3, verse 6 to 9, Romans 4, verse 16. All right, so I'm going to read Galatians 3 from the King James 6 to 9 says, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, knowing therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Let me read verse 9 again. So then, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And I already gave you Romans 4 uh, before. Let's look at it again. Romans 4 and verse 16 says, Therefore, uh, uh, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So again, we talked about faith. It's not just any type of faith you need if you're going to be a child of God. The type of faith that God is looking for in our lives, that the Holy Ghost wants to produce, is the type of faith that Abraham had. Not the type of faith that Balaam had. Not the type of faith that Esau had. There are many people who had faith in your Bible, right? Not, not that even the devils believe, the Bible says. There is a specific type of faith that is going to keep you and carry you through to the end of your journey, right? So when God called Abraham, yes, he left his country by faith. He was not proved faithful then. It was simply faith that caused him to leave, right? But then we saw how Abraham struggled when the famine came. He didn't trust God in the famine. He went down to Egypt. Right. He, 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 you know, didn't really lie, but uh, he was willing to give up Sarah, his wife, to the king of Egypt. And, we, we, you know, we see all the various tests at least 10 times that God tested Abraham with circumcision. He tested Abraham. Right. And then we have this encounter with his with, 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 when he told him to send Ishmael away. That was also a test of Abraham's faith. And now we see him left with his only son. And God says, I'm going to test him again. So it was, it, it is, it is continuous testing that produced, right? The level of faith in Abraham to where he could be called faithful. You have to learn, move from just being a person of faith to becoming a person of, uh, to becoming a person who is faithful full like Abraham. See, let me say it again. You got to move from being a person of faith to becoming a person who is faithful. Many of us are stuck in the gap. You had saving faith. You came into the church. You heard the gospel. Somebody taught you a Bible study. You got baptized. You cried at the altar. You may have spoken in tongues. Wonderful. Awesome. They told you to get into membership class. You did that. They gave you a certificate. Now you're a member. You come and you sit uh, Sunday after Sunday. You volunteer. But you're still operating off of infant faith. See? Okay? You need to grow to become faithful. And guess what? One of the ways for you to grow is by being involved in ministry. Because when you're involved in ministry, that is where faithfulness is put to the test. See? Right? So many people don't want to sign up for stuff. They don't want to commit to anything. Why? Because there's a struggle when it comes to being faithful. But God wants to produce faithfulness out of our lives, right? He is commended for his steadfastness, right? And that is to be imitated by 
Christians. Next slide, please. Faithfulness so, then must not be okay. viewed as an isolated act. Rather, it is an attitude that should characterize the entire life of those who say they are faith in God. God's children are called to manifest faithfulness as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, I know it's not easy. I know we're tempted to quit. <clears throat> I know thoughts come across our minds that, oh, I'm giving myself to this, I'm giving myself to this, and I got to work, and I got a family, and I got kids, and I got all these other responsibilities. And we know that these pressures of life, they pull on us, folks. It is supposed to, right? Because it is, it, 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 you, you could not derive faithfulness in someone's character if it did not cost them something, if it didn't cost you something, there's no way you could prove yourself to be faithful. You have to, you have to face a choice. You have to make sacrifices. That is how faithfulness is manifested. So when we see all these different things pulling at us and God bless all of those who we can count on week after week to come to rehearsal, to practice, to sing, to play the instruments, to clean the church. Sunday after Sunday, we can count on them to teach Bible studies and to <clears throat> be ushers and greeters and all the various ministries that are in the church. And these same folks, they work, they have jobs, they're tired, they have families, they have other things that they're doing but their faithfulness is being matured. Their faithfulness is being built <clears throat> through this process, see? So it's not just one act <clears throat> and you're gonna say you're faithful. No, it, it is an attitude that we all must develop. It is not for a, a, a privileged few. It is not for the clergy, okay? Every child of God, every Christian, God wants, remember, it is a fruit of the Spirit, right? It's an, it's an attitude that every child of God needs to mature. Your entire life should reflect faithfulness to God. All right? Next slide, please. God's faithfulness and covenant love are closely related. Deuteronomy 7 to 9, Psalms 25 to 10, verse 10, and Psalms 85, verse 10. The most profound example of his faithfulness is the bond between God and the people of the northern kingdom of Israel. In spite of their unfaithfulness, God reminds them that he is betrothed to them in faithfulness. He is loyal to his covenant and will always manifest his steadfast love to his people. God calls men and women to be faithful by following Christ, relying on him for all things. All right. So remember now, God is never going to ask us to do anything that, 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 that he hasn't done or that he will not do. And again, in spite of our incapabilities, he enables us. So when God asks you to do something, we rely on him and he empowers us to do what he asks us to do. And what he's asking us to do or to become is in his character and in his likeness. Notice that God's faithfulness was on display primarily when his people were unfaithful to him. His faithfulness stood out more. Yes, he's faithful to his word when we obey him, but God's faithfulness extends beyond favorable relationships, right? He's faithful. The Bible says he sends the rain on the just and on the unjust, see? So our faithfulness is not just based upon favorable circumstances, right? You have to be faithful as a child of God, even to your enemies. You got to faithfully love them, faithfully forgive them. You have to be faithful to ministry and giving, even when conditions and circumstances and situations are adverse. It's not about being faithful when everything is fine. 
It's not about being faithful when all is going well. What marriage would last if the husband and wife were only faithful when they got along? And as soon as things go south, she goes somewhere, he goes somewhere. That's not a marriage, folks. That is not a relationship. Relationships are built upon faithfulness that is expressed, especially when you you're dealing with opposing forces or adverse circumstances. So as children of God, we have to faithfully forgive. We have to faithfully repent. We have to faithfully love. Praise God. Uh, if you're going to be a successful husband or wife, you better learn, praise God, to be a successful Christian. Or even the other way around. Marriage will teach you ministry. And ministry will teach you marriage. People don't want to be involved in ministry in church, but, oh, I want a husband, I want a wife. Guess what? You, the same characteristics that are necessary in order for you to be successful in ministry are the same characteristics you're going to need to be successful in marriage, folks. <laughs> all right? It is all about faithfulness. Praise God. Next slide. The Israelites were expected to respond in faithfulness to God because he had acted faithfully to them through the covenant. David and other godly people chose to walk the faith, the faithful way, the way of truth, Psalm 119.30. Just as God is both faithful and loving, those who believe in God need to exhibit, exhibit faithfulness and steadfast love in their lives. Ah. Proverbs 3.3. 3. Yes, Proverbs 3.3, 3, right? Those who believe in God need to exhibit what? Faithfulness and steadfast love. Let's, let's continue with that. Go ahead. Next, next, next slide. Next slide. In the New Testament, God also acts in faithfulness. He provides for both good and evil people, Matthew 5, 45. He rewards those who do his goodwill, Matthew 6, 4, 6, 18. He provides a way out for believers in the midst of temptation, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He reminds faithful as he fulfills his promises, 2 Corinthians 1, 18 to 19. Amen. That God's character of faithfulness is exemplified throughout Scripture. Next slide, please. Paul reminds mm -hmm. us that even when we are faithful, faithless, God remains faithful because he cannot disown himself. Second Timothy 2, verse 13. John declared that Jesus is, Jesus is faithful and true witness. Revelation 3, verse 14. God remained fulfilled, faithful to New Testament believers, both fulfilling and promising to fulfill the promise of the Old Testament. All right. Even when we are faithless, God is faithful. faithful, folks. And guess what? That is what we ought to emulate. So we cannot change as Christians simply because the world rejects us. It doesn't matter how many times you invite someone to church or ask them to a Bible study. They might be faithless, but we still have to be faithful. We got to continue to show them love. We got to continue to be there and reach out to people who may have rejected us or even spoken against us or whatever way they have acted themselves, acted whatever way they may have acted. We have to maintain a level of faithfulness, right? Next slide, please. Christians like the Israelites are to respond to God in faithfulness. Trustworthy servants must approve, must prove themselves to be faithful. So when we look for characteristics in the church, folks, right? We're not looking for people with talent per se, okay? You can have a hundred people with, with talent in the church, but only five who are faithful, see? You can have somebody in the church who can sing better than the next person, but the other person might be more faithful see 
When you're looking to elevate people and put people in positions and positions especially of leadership, these are the characteristics that exemplify Jesus Christ. Are you faithfully coming to church? Are you faithfully on time? Are you faithfully participating in the church's activities? Are you faithfully showing interest in the work of the Lord? Are you faithfully giving? All of these areas are what leaders and they are what God looks at to determine your level of maturity, folks. Okay? So when, when, when you are spoken to or addressed about your consistency and your reliability, it's not as if someone is picking on you for, 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 for evil. They're simply pointing out to you that you need to work on developing a faithful attitude towards your walk with God, right? Remember, faithfulness has to do with trustworthiness and if you're going to be trustworthy you have to prove yourself there must be a period of time paul says don't lay hands on any man suddenly so sometimes you wonder well why hasn't pastor called me to do something why this or why not maybe he's watching to see how faithful you are well i signed up for this and i volunteered for that why haven't they called me yet well are you going to be faithful see these are the characteristics that matter in your christian development next slide please Thank the you. english word faith comes from the latin fides faith does not function as a verb in contemporary english the verb to believe has replaced the verb to faith faithfulness is not a single act it is a cumulative actions of one who truly believes all right so our english word comes from the latin fides right and again it has the same meaning as aman yare pistis and pisteo okay it all has the same meaning okay um now why today there is this distinction and misunderstanding, misappropriation, and misapplication of faith is because uh, faith today is not seen as a verb or an action word, right? So we 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 are we are all uh, now um, familiar with uh, you know repeat after me and you're saved, you know pray this prayer and you're saved because faith has now been transformed into just this mental assent that if I agree in my mind and I say a few words, uh, therefore I can derive the benefit of faith. But uh, understand that in its root meaning, uh, to, to have faith is to believe and believe is a verb. To believe is an action word. So there is there, there ought to be no distinction between faith and believing. See, that's why we, we always talk about James 2, right? Uh, faith without works is dead. See, so true faith is faith that demonstrates itself not in a single act because a person can say they believe and get baptized, but that doesn't mean you're faithful. See, you can say you believe and receive the Holy Ghost. Yes, you receive it by faith, but that does not make you faithful. It is the cumulative actions. It is the consistency of what you're doing, walking with the Lord despite, regardless, against contrary winds, against contrariness, against adversity, all the different things that, that life will throw your way, all the things that will come across your path. To be consistent through all of that is the definition of faithfulness i'm going to give you some scriptures all right uh this is the last slide first thessalonians 5 24 says faithful is he that calleth you who also will 
do it. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Revelation 19 11. And I saw heaven opened and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. In righteousness he doth judge and make war. These scriptures, and there are so many more, give us the description, the descriptive of who our God is, of who Jesus is. That is his name. He is called faithful and true. He is a true witness, right? And 2 Timothy 2 verse 2, Paul wants Timothy to understand, right, that if you're going to assign uh, responsibilities in the church, the way you're going to determine mature people are those who are emulating Christ's character. So 2 Timothy 2 verse 2, he says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to not talented men, not men of wealth or fame, but the characteristics that I want you to, the characteristic I want you to, that is most essential, and I want you to look for in choosing people who are going to lead in the church, commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Praise God. I hope this lesson uh, served as an eye-opening to some, a reminder to many that it is, it is indeed important that we don't shirk our responsibilities. Uh, once you commit to something, and it, it's no reason for you to avoid any commitment, uh, we all can't commit to the same thing. We all can't commit to everything, but all of us should commit to something when it comes to the work of the Lord. And again, it doesn't mean that there won't be adversities and setbacks and days when you don't feel like and days you're tired and days you want to quit. We all go through that, but that, that is the means. That is why the Holy Ghost is given to you, right? To summon, to empower, to energize you in those moments of despair, those moments when you want to give up, right? The Holy Ghost will produce faithfulness, this energy, this drive, this, this persistence, this, this mind that says go on, all right? When all is against you, that mind that says go on, that is the fruit of the Spirit that God wants us to develop in our lives. God bless you. Uh, we conclude on the topic of faith, and then we're going to begin on the topic of love. We're dealing with the fruit of the Spirit. We're dealing with all the various aspects. And I hope that it, this has enlightened us. I, I, I uh, recommend that uh, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, share, like, and share, uh, but also interact. I encourage interaction and discussion. Amen. Ask questions. Let's have a discourse. Let's help each other to grow. Until next time, God bless.